Antisemitism is on the rise in Europe, from Madrid to Malmo, uh, Jewish are worried about their future in, uh, in Europe. And how does uh, young Jews uh, uh, view this current situation, how they are facing those problems? Uh, all these topics we are uh, discussing uh, uh, today here at the European Parliament in Brussels with the two young activists. Uh, on my left, Rebecca Goba uh, from the European Coalition for Israel, welcome. Uh, Dylan Bolker, a young member of the staff of the European Jewish Congress. And uh, of course, we are joined by a very prominent uh, member of the European Parliament, uh, Bert Jan Rissen, who is also the Vice Chairman of the European Parliament Delegation to the Israeli Knesset. Welcome. Uh, my name is Marco Mbacci, and this is the European Report. Let's start uh, from you, Dylan. Um, how is the life of a Jewish in one of the uh, main European capital? Uh, are you facing any problems? Uh, can you give us some example of the problems that you can face, you are facing here in Europe? That's a very good question. I think being a young European Jew in the 21st century has its challenges. I think the most important one, and it's the one that I faced in my time living in major European capitals like Brussels or Madrid, is being afraid of being openly of who you are, of being open of your uh, Judaism. I think like for many European Jews, uh, they feel threatened or they feel afraid of sharing uh, who they are, not only to strangers, but also to their close friends. Uh, sometimes for European Jews, um, engaging in some conversations, it feels for them to become like ambassadors or politicians that they need to defend, uh, in some cases, all the Jews in the world, or also, for example, the State of Israel. Many people don't make the distinction between the State of Israel, Judaism, and we can see that a lot in university campus, that there are a lot of European Jews that feel afraid of going to classes, uh, to showing up uh, to the campuses because they feel afraid of demonstrations, um, and in my case, um, I felt that as well, uh, like engaging in normal conversations in daily life. Of course, you can see that in uh, more political movements, in demonstrations, in manifestations, with a very clear anti-Semitic message. We, s we saw that in Germany uh, the last weekend, that there were like chants against Jews. So I think like for a youth person, the most difficult thing is uh, to who uh, say that you are a Jew. And have you ever faced, uh, you personally, a case of anti-Semitism, you or a um, friend of yours? Um, I, I think like most of the anti-Semitism I felt comes more from the ignorance of the people I, I encountered. I think there are different kinds of anti-Semitism anti and there is a lot of anti-Semitic rhetoric going around still in the 21st century. So in my case, uh, when I met new people, uh, young, uh, young Europeans um, in university campuses or also here in Brussels, they have many preconceived ideas of what means being a Jew. They don't know the diversity, the complexity of Judaism. They, sometimes they only understand it as a religion, but they don't uh, know how diverse um, is uh, the communities around Europe. So in my case, I had many discussions, uh, sometimes when I were like, speaking to them about my Judaism or about, uh, I don't know, uh, dinners, uh, my pa Passover dinners or Rosh Hashanah dinners, uh, I ended up like discussing about Israel. Uh, so that's a, a thing that usually happens to youngsters, that they... Also among the cycle of your friends, uh, yeah. this happens, no? Of course, of course. Many people have preconceived ideas. Uh, according to official statistics, only 4% of the European population are aware, fully aware of what Judaism really is. And also we see statistics that the memory of the Shoah is fading away less and less uh, young people know what happened the, during the Holocaust. And this has an impact in the everyday life. Um, so sometimes I feel that I, I need to become, and for me sometimes I am proud of, to become uh, the, uh, the person to explain what Judaism really is and the complexity about it. That's very, very interesting. Uh, Mr. Wissen, uh, you are a politician, uh, you are a member of the European Parliament. What is the, your perception about anti-Semitism in Europe? Uh, what is the European Union doing uh, about it, how to fight anti-Semitism? Yes, it is indeed um, an issue uh, um, I've, I have big concerns about it. And what you just told uh, us, um, I hear that quite often when I speak to people from the Jewish community. 
how difficult it is. Um, we are living here in Europe in, in what we call a peaceful society, but on the other hand, the reality is that a lot of people in, in, uh, in Europe uh, don't feel safe. Um, there's a lack of respect, respect for each other, uh, and especially uh, in relation to Jewish people. There are so many, let's say, uh, disrespect and anti-Semitism. Um, so yes, that's an issue of great concerns also in the European Parliament. So what do we have to do? I think different things. First of all, I think uh, we have to improve our data collecting. Mm -hmm. Because a, lit, a lot of anti-Semitic uh, incidents are still unrecorded. Secondly, I think we uh, need to realize that it is a responsibility of, of all levels of the government to act. Uh, also civil society, but also at the level of schools. And I would also like to underline the importance of ed education. Uh, we have now... Uh, uh, discussion with, with young people, and I really, really uh, believe that well, young people, new the new generation, they can play a crucial role uh, in, in, let's say, changing uh, the situation. So let's start with, let's say, good education everywhere in Europe. Yeah. And there is also anti a lot of anti-Semitism online. Uh, is the, like the European Union trying to do something like to fight also anti-Semitism online? Uh? Yes, that's indeed one of the elements in this uh, strategy of the, of the Commission. Uh, to work also on awareness about uh, what is happening um, in the digital world. Uh, we see a lot of hate speech uh, and yeah, we have to work on that. And uh, yeah, it must be clear that every form of anti-Semitic um, uh, content that's unacceptable. We have to fight against that. Yeah. And have you ever witnessed some example of anti-Semitism here in the European Parliament? Uh, probably in some speech of other member of the European Parliament uh, or some debates that were oriented in an anti-Semitism way? Well, recently we, we had uh, the report of Amnesty International about uh, Israel, uh, accusing Israel of being an apartheid state. In my opinion, that's a really negative report. Uh, it don't give a good picture about the real situation. Uh, and we, have, we, are, we have raised questions about that report here in the Parliament and to ask a reaction of the High Representatives on that. Because I see also uh, well, uh, anti-Semitic uh, uh, elements also in that report. That's just one example. Um, exactly what you said, it's so difficult for people uh, to see a difference between, let's say, the state of Israel on the one, and and um, um, the Jewish uh, people, Jewish, Jewish life, yeah, Judaism, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's uh, a very interesting topic, uh, uh, Rebecca. You are Christian. Uh, you are working for the European Coalition for Israel. That one of his main tasks is to fight anti-Semitism. But uh, why, for you, according to your opinion, why a Christian should be involved in the fight against anti-Semitism? Yes, you're totally right, and uh, that is one of our main objectives in ECI. And uh, when I hear what Dylan is sharing, I understand that this problem cannot only be a Jewish problem. It cannot be that it's only their responsibility to raise awareness and alarm us and, and, and share how, uh, you know, how this, this problem is on the rise. So that's why we, and the mission of ECI since its founding has been to be this other voice, non-Jewish, non-Israeli, uniquely European voice here in the, in, the, in the capital of Europe that stands with the, the, with the Jewish people and really raises the awareness, showing them that we as Christians as well, and Europeans, uh, we are with them in, in these times. And this is quite, quite very interesting, because probably if uh, the defense of uh, the Judaism, uh, the fight against anti-Semitism comes also from some Christian side, uh, the people will uh, uh, not accuse immediately someone to defend Israel. So there will be uh, a sort of difference between uh, the, two, the two different uh, actions. Uh, uh, Dylan, 
uh, do you feel that the European youth is, uh, uh, gener generally speaking, aware of the anti-Semitism uh, in Europe? Do you think that the youth are involved in the process uh, on the fight against anti-Semitism? Um, I think there are worrying statistics uh, by the European institutions regarding the involvement on the youth on the fight against anti-Semitism and also the general knowledge that exists about uh, what happened uh, during the Holocaust and also on the anti-Semitism trends. So from my personal perspective, um, I think the European youth has to be more involved in the fight against anti-Semitism because anti-Semitism is not only a threat for European Jewry, it's a threat for democracy for the values upon the European institutions were built after the Second World War. Um, so I think nowadays we see a lot of challenges, as the MP said, in the, in the online world. And many, as we know, youngsters is their general habitat nowadays. So I think there should be a major realization of the dangers that exist in the social networks. And I think the, the youth is not only the future. Uh, we always uh, receive this kind of uh, statement, but we are also the present. And anti-Semitism is on the rise. And of course, we need to change uh, what will happen in the future when many Holocaust survivors will not be with us. And also when what happened during the Second World War uh, will be like a memory. But we also need to do it in the present. So I think the, the youth, all the youth, Christian youth, the Muslim youth, everyone uh, needs to be involved in this fight against anti-Semitism and against discrimination in general. And you as a European Jewish Congress, are you already speaking with, this, uh, with other youth associations uh, for this uh, task uh, or not? The European Jewish Congress has been fostering uh, not only interreligious dialogue between a lot of organizations, but has been working uh, since in, in inception with uh, the youth of uh, the European Jewry in every country that we represent. We represent more than 40 countries, not only in Europe, but outside the European area. And we have been working and hearing their concerns and preoccupations. For example, some months ago, we received a delegation from the European Union of Jewish Students. So they came to us uh, with their concerns. We are based in Brussels, so we are their, their representation and we need a to fight and push for their desires. Because of course, sometimes we, we think about the anti-Semitism as something more general, but it has an impact on everyday life. So the European Jewish Congress is in permanent contact with their affiliates, but also with the Jewish representation of the Jewish communities. That's, that's very interesting. And you say something that, uh, in my opinion, is, is very, is very... First of all, the, one, the most important is the interreligious dialogue and this is extremely important, and the other one is always to defend uh, the religious freedom. Yeah. And this is uh, this year, uh, stick with, uh, with the Jewish, with the Christians in the Middle East, uh, and with the others. Uh, it's very important that Europe uh, should defend those values, because if you don't defend those values, we cannot speak about human rights in mm -hmm. other parts of the countries. If you don't defend the human values in, in Europe. Uh, how is the situation with anti-Semitism in, uh, in the Netherlands? Are there some cases? Uh, are some examples of uh, anti-Semitism uh, action from uh, different uh, uh, group, uh, and what is the Dutch government doing to fight the anti-Semitism? Well, also in the Netherlands we see a lot of anti-Semitism. It's, it's a shame. Eh? Uh, what we see, for example, is uh, attacks uh, against a restaurant uh, in Amsterdam for, for several times. It happened several times. It's just one example. But also the fact that the Jewish school in Amsterdam, and also synagogues, they need security uh, measures. Otherwise, it's not safe for them. Uh, so that's also another clear example uh, that the situation also in the Netherlands is really concerning. Yeah, yeah what are we doing in the Netherlands? What, what we did, for example, is we, uh, we appointed a special envoy on the fight uh, against anti-Semitism. Uh, I think that's a really, really good initiative. And uh, the Commission um, urged also other member states to uh, appoint uh, a special envoy. He can work on, well, uh, let's say, uh, more awareness about what is, ha what is happening. Uh, but yeah, special envoy is just one thing. 
we have to change the society. We have to change <laughs> the mind of people, mm -hmm. uh, the heart of people. And I th uh, how to change that? I think it's all st it's all starts also maybe a family life. Uh, what what are we teaching our children? The education, age, education. Well, but, but ed education. Then you are teach speaking about school level. Mm -hmm. But it starts already at the level at, at home. Eh? What what what, uh, what do, does your parents tell you? Eh? Does they learn to respect each other? Eh? Uh, that these are the, the basic values uh, we have to um, uh, work on. Yeah, totally, um, totally agree. Uh, one, one question. All the attacks, uh, uh, now let's speak about the Netherlands because you are a, a Dutch uh, member of the European Parliament. All those attacks to the Jewish restaurant, uh, uh, Jewish cemeteries uh, that there are like uh, in Netherlands, also in France, uh, uh, in Italy and other countries, from which group they are arriving? Because probably there are some uh, far-right extremism, but there are other, some other religious extremism that are attacking, or like a lot of ignorant people that are uh, attacking uh, a Jewish symbol all around the Europe. Which are the group that are doing the, those attacks in the Netherlands? I have the impression that um, uh, anti-Semitism is, is coming from different groups. From far right, maybe also extreme left, uh, talking about too negative about the state of Israel. So, uh, uh, but also in the, in, the, in, the, in the Muslim world, I think. It, so you can't say, well, it's, it's just coming from one category. I think it's in different parts of our society, unfortunately, uh, yeah. present. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, th that's even more difficult, uh, because when we have to f uh, fight against anti-Semitism, if it comes only from one group, uh, yes. uh, it's... <laughs> It will be easier mm -hmm. because uh, you have one strategy for those group for one for one group. But if you have different groups, and sometimes those, those groups are mixing, oh, yeah. and this is extremely extremely worry. Also, sometimes far left, far right, they are uh, join uh, they join the, their forces uh, in the anti-Semitism perspective. So this is even more uh, more difficult. And I, for this reason, I think that uh, one and for also other reasons that the MEP recent said. For the education, for the family, etc., is extremely important to the youth. But how can the youth can be more involved? The European youth, how can be more involved in the fight against anti-Semitism? Yeah. So as we see in this discussions today among young adults, it's um, you know environmental threats. We have inequality. So as you say, we need to be more involved, and that's what I also see because all these these debates that are more popular among young adults now, they overshadow the anti-Semitism, sometimes even contradict. So I think for us, as young adults here, as young activists, um, we have to be more outspoken and join this debate uh, that is happening and also to really amplify this, this problem of anti-Semitism. But of course, I have to repeat again, it's the social media. And nowadays, it's so much, more, uh, so much easier for us, each of us, to become activists and have a global platform any minute accessible. And um, what is important is that we are not only reactive, but also proactive. So not only reacting to what we see online, but that we also use social media, use our platforms, our circles to be proactive and to produce content that is um, uh, correct, that spreads correct information, debunks myths about um, um, Jew the Jewish people. So I think that is, that is what we can do. And of course, cooperating as, as my, you know, Christians in different communities, I think it's important that all these faith communities come together um, to really address this, this problem. Uh, do you speak also with the big uh, tech companies, uh, the big uh, social media companies like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and maybe you can give also some suggestions probably to, to how to fight uh, uh, online anti-Semitism. Have you already spoken with these big uh, tech companies? Are you in dialogue with them or not yet? Uh, so I, I know that the European Parliament has been um, in dialogue and national governments have been in, and I've seen some improvements, for example, on the platform called uh, TikTok. There is, um, um, they have like, there's this feature that recognizes whenever there is a specific word mentioned, they fact check, the, the app fact checks that content immediately. So I think it's important for um, these tech companies, these social media platforms to invent more features 
um, because there's so much content, you cannot really follow every word that is being said uh, online. But if they improve these features that, that detect this hate speech, hate speech and, and take it down on time be before it goes viral and is exposed to a lot of teenagers and, and, and even kids and young adults. So I think it's important for them to, to develop these tools and also for us to be active. And of course, we have the opportunity to report different uh, accounts or, or content. So I think, uh, yeah. There's, and there's a lot that tech companies can really uh, do in this, and there should definitely be a dialogue and uh, cooperation. Very, very good. And as a young activist, Dylan, uh, are you already speaking with some government where they were facing the, a lot of problem of anti-Semitism, like, for example, Sweden or some Nordic countries, that there were a, a lot of problem of anti-Semitism attacks against the Jewish, but probably now they are doing something? Yeah, of course. I think 2021, uh, was a very important year for the European Jewry, not only because the European Commission presented its first strategy to combat antisemitism, and that showed the concern that exists in all the European member states on this threat. Um, 15 years ago, it would be impossible to think that we will have like all these tools. Uh, also, there were resolutions from the European Council, and also the, the European Parliament uh, was uh, pushing forward uh, to be like a structural answer to, to this problem. Now what we need is implementation. And we see, we are seeing that many European countries uh, are uh, selecting their envoy against antisemitism. They're presenting their own strategy to combat antisemitism because that's what's written in the European strategy of the European Commission, that every member state needs to present their strategy at the end of this year, if I am not mistaken. Um, and for example, Sweden, that is a country that has uh, faced rising antisemitism in 2021, they uh, organized the Malmo Forum uh, on combating antisemitism that many uh, European Jewish organizations were present there, but not only from the European Jewry, because as we said before, this is a problem of all the European continent and uh, an attack against the Jews is an attack to European democratic values. So we've been seeing a rise in antisemitism, that's true. But also at the same time, the national governments and also the European Union is responding. Now we have to see if there are going to be clear actions against it. Because of, of as we know, words, sometimes they can be taken by the wind. As you, as you said before, yeah, one thing is having the strategy and after yeah. another thing is to implement it. So that's where the civil society should step in and try yeah, like, to course. make it. And not all just the civil society, but especially the youth, uh, yeah. needs really to play, I think, a very important uh, uh, role on, uh, on this. Mr. Wilson, yesterday there was a big election in Europe. Uh, Macron won uh, uh, the French elections. Uh, but France, uh, in the past years, faced a lot of cases of antisemitism. Uh, personally, I remember that I was in different uh, cemeteries uh, a bit outside Paris to report about uh, uh, those, uh, those attacks uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the Jewish cemeteries uh, in, um, in France. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you said, uh, there are different groups they are attacking because there was a vastica, a swastika, and there was a written death to Israel uh, uh, made probably according to the police report by far left uh, extremists. So this is a... Do you have an appeal uh, to, to make to, to President Macron? Uh, do you have something to say to uh, the leader of the countries, the European countries, uh, to how to implement the strategy against anti-Semitism? Because I think that it will be extremely, extremely important also to, uh, to let clear to all the people that can be punished if they do an attack uh, uh, against uh, religious, uh, against the Jewish, against Christians, against all the, the, the symbols. So do you have an appeal? Do you have something to say uh, to him if he will meet uh, uh, in the next couple of minutes the, president, the French president? Yes, well, first of all, I, I, then, uh, I, I would uh, like to say to him, well, please act. Huh? And, and, and when, when uh, uh, there is an attack or something like that, or there is uh, anti-Semitic content on Facebook, Please act. Uh, uh, um, but in addition to that, uh, I would also like to say to, to Macron, it's also really important to work on, let's say, a kind of a feeling also within the Jewish community that the people, Jewish people, uh, still f feel themselves, let's say, um, uh, uh, as part of Europe. 
Jewish has a long history in Europe. And we have to make clear to the Jewish community, yes, you are, you are a main part of the European society. And you have uh, the possibility, let's say, to be yourself in Europe. And also to follow your own um, um, as I rules or habits or do you mean what do you understand what I mean also speaking about uh, ritual slaughter for, for, for example uh, sometimes we are I think too strict uh, and it's re really important to work on a freedom of religion hmm? also within Europe and also for the Jewish community hmm? absolutely so, absolutely yeah. eh, eh. You say something about the slaughtering of uh, the, 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 yes. the, the branding, uh, etc. The, the European uh, Parliament uh, did something, you know, in the, in, the last, uh, in the last year, in the last couple of years, uh, uh, there was a big debate in the European Parliament about this, no? Yes, but in, in the end it is up to the member states uh, to decide on what is acceptable for us and what's not. So you see a lot of, let's say, these are, there are different so competencies, uh, different legislations within uh, between between member states. So you would say to uh, President Macron, create a network, uh, so speak with other member states uh, to help uh, uh, the Jewish to live their Jewish life in Europe. Yes, indeed. indeed. Because uh, uh, a Europe without Jewish uh, is not anymore Europe. Right. And this is uh, extremely important. Yeah. And with this sentence, we uh, end uh, this, uh, uh, a monthly European uh, report. I would like to thank uh, uh, Dylan, Rebecca and uh, the MEP uh, Ruissen for uh, uh, speaking with us about uh, antisemitism in uh, Europe and see you next month. Thank you very much.